We've been getting a ton of comments that if you were to get hit in a 556 when frass because it is flexible, uh, your organs are gonna get ripped out, your rib cage is gonna just get blown to who knows where, and you're just going to die. So, what we're gonna do today is test a variety of rifle plates from brass to steel to polyethylene and the ceramic plate to show you the difference, difference in blunt force, our BFD ratings, which is how we measure blunt force, the energy that gets transferred into your body, uh, using an NIJ specific test uh, and NIJ specified clay. First thing we need to do is take care of our clay conditioning block. Make sure we do a ball drop to uh, verify that we have accurate measurements. Then we're gonna shoot at these things. This clay is Romoplastilina number two. It is what's specified by the NIJ. We have conditioning chambers to make sure that these are kept perfectly all the time. We'll verify it with this drop. Um, this is really the key to measuring that blunt force. One thing to notate before we start shooting these blocks is that this clay is not meant to mimic flesh and bone. And I can show you that through this. If I push into you as a human, I cannot move you around like that. This is meant to be a very consistent medium for measuring blunt force. Um, so just remember, just because you see a crater does not mean that's what's gonna be left in your body. This is the uh, very specific NIJ ball bearing. Climb the ladder, drop it from a set distance onto the clay, and repeat that. Next, we're gonna level this off and measure the indentation that's in that clay block. It needs to be 19 millimeters, plus or minus two, on average, to be within spec. To make sure this is a valid clay box, we're looking for 19 millimeters, plus or minus two. Uh, as long as we are within that, we're good to go. 19.45. 19.45. Nineteen point one five. Nineteen point one five. Twenty point two five. Nineteen point nine five. Nineteen point nine five. What's the average? The average is nineteen point seven five. Perfect. Let's do it. So plates, because they're curved, require a little bit of a different method to measure VFDs. When we're talking about soft armor, it's very easy to just strap them up uh, because they lay flat and you can, and you shoot at them. Luckily, frass will work that way. However, for curved plates, we either need to build up the clay um, and then do a more complicated measurement method, or for the purpose of this video, we're going to recess them so that we're going to shoot in an area that's nice and flat so we can just level it off for you. A little strap happy here with all these plates. We're gonna be taking one shot at all of these. We're gonna scrape it off, get the back face deformation on each one of them. We're gonna start with shooting the generic uh, ceramic plate, followed by the AR500 steel, the Guardian polyethylene, and we're going to finish off with frass. We're gonna be using DRZ M855 factory rounds. First shot, ceramic. Woof! Three, two, seven, eight. Three, two, seven, eight. Uh, we're gonna move that right to shot two, please. First shot, 3,278 feet per second, right into that ceramic uh, generic plate. Next up, AR-500 steel. Yes? Three, two, four, six. That's 3,246 feet per second into that AR-500 steel, M855. Yes, this is M855 into that level three polyethylene. No velocity? No velocity. Uh, looks like we're going down the center. It looks like we're going down the center, so we should be good. We got no velocity on that one. It's factory ammo though, it's pretty consistent. We'll assume 3250. And finally, we're shooting the same exact rounds into frass. Yes. Three, two, 
Three, two, three, two. That's 3,232 feet per second directly into press. Let's check it out. All right, just leave her. Yeah, we'll leave her right there for now. Okay, so we have our impact on each of these panels. We got them right in the center like we're looking for. We're gonna remove them, scrape it flat, and see what we got. All right, so first thing we notice, no penetration on frass. No penetration on the ceramic, no penetration on the polyethylene. And no penetration on the steel. Let's flatten it out, we'll get our measurements. All right, we're gonna scrape this level. Get our caliper and get our measurements. I'm gonna start with the first one we shot. This was the ceramic plate. I'm gonna go for the deepest portion of that crater, which is 24.15 millimeters, well within the NIJ safe zone. Next was the AR500 steel, which is a little tiny one. one point eight millimeters then we have the polyethylene plate coming in at thirty four point eight millimeters and finally we have frass Twenty three point nine five millimeters. Now, uh, it's important to note that the NIJ safe zone is 44 millimeters um, and that actually out of all these panels, steel does do the best. Steel will have the best on the on the back face deformation. However, it's much heavier. You have spalling to deal with and uh, it's just not as fun to wear. However, we have our ceramic plate, which seems to be a pretty solid representation of what, I, what I've seen before, um, coming in deeper than the frass. And then we have our, uh, can, what are considered high-end polyethylene plates that are much deeper than frass as well. If you're looking to compare steel, frass, polyethylenes, or ceramics, frass is actually one of the more safe ones as far as blunt force goes. So we just shot all of these rifle plates using M855 ammo, traveling at about 3,250 feet per second. We have AR500 steel, FRAS, our flexible rifle armor system, a ceramic plate, and a polyethylene plate. AR500 came in at 1.8 millimeters of back face deformation. That's fantastic. However, it weighs about 9.59 pounds. Next best was actually FRAS, our flexible rifle armor. That came in at 23.95 millimeters, but only weighs four pounds. So you can get two and almost a half of these for each of the steel plates. The ceramic plate was close behind FRAS at 24.15 millimeters of back face deformation. However, it is a bit heavier at 5.89 pounds. And last, we had our polyethylene plate that came in at 34.8 millimeters of back face deformation, weighing in at about 4.67 pounds. What would you wear?